This is a test of the Bounty Park Alert System. Hello and welcome to the Latix Football Phone In with me, Matt Dean. And me, Sexy Dave Bradley. Mm. How are you, Dave? Sexy as ever. How are you? All right, yeah. How was the rugby? Uh, good. Mm, do you remember it? No. <laughs> uh, you know, I can't, I can, all I remember is England winning mm. and a lot of Welsh fans getting angry as how much I cheered, stood next to them. And you, you were in bed by our fate, weren't you? Yeah, I, I, we ended up going out of Cardiff. Uh, the pubs were packed and we i said look at that lovely pub and it was full of 20 drag queens nice. so yeah it was great yeah. um because you've not had a drink since spots and day had you or new year's, new year's eve. eve and then you decided to go to rugby and get on it so i had one pint <laughs> then two pints uh, it got to 21 pints That's uh, ridiculous yeah it worked good but I, I, all i remember is getting to the pub because the can't get the network in cardiff on a match day because of uh, all the people i got to the pub about 10 to uh, 10 to 7, 10 past 7. I looked at Oldham had won and I couldn't believe it. And then I got all your abuse. Listen, uh, yeah, I thought you showed me a message that I sent you. <laughs> which <laughs> <laughs> I'd forgotten about, which was, wasn't very nice, was no, it? No, it was awful. <laughs> it was like a... you, you missed an absolutely fantastic day on Saturday. It mm. was, it's such a shame that you that you missed that because it was the highlight of the season so far. It was. It was, the atmosphere was unbelievable there's we've got a very special guest on today and i'm sure our special guest will will have uh memories of of some special atmospheres that he can share with us um favorite games and away games and stuff like that but the atmosphere was it was one of those you know when there's just something it's not quite tangible but there's something in the atmosphere in the air in the in the crowd there. just there right. you, you can't, can't right, okay. touch it or feel it or smell it but it was just electric, and it just carried it just carried through onto the pitch. And Salt we, Bay. It was just like a. <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing. Uh, no, it's good. We good. We won, and then we went to Barnet. I spoke. Oh, before I do anything, uh, happy birthday to Roy Butterworth, who is twenty-one again. All plus right. That times <laughs> three. Yeah. And a bit more. Okay. Happy so birthday, he, Roy. Yeah, this week. So great guy. Alan Jones has asked me to give you a big shout out. And he's a friend of the show, Roy Butterworth. You should have got some party poppers. No, because uh, I know you're like for messing this studio. Uh, <laughs> you're a bit, uh, yeah. All anyway. anyway, go to Barnet. Yeah. Hope for a draw. Yeah. We're going to bloody win it, mate. I know. Doddle. Uh, 3 yeah. 1. So what a, what a few days. I mean, last week we, we had the um, David from Gateshead. Yeah. on the podcast on the phone in and um you know we were we were <laughs> we were all really depressed mm. and then a week later two away wins on the bounce yeah and gates have been deducted a point for playing any eligible player this evening six, yeah so if you're watching david tough <laughs> uh, also i want to thank mike fondop for nearly breaking my ankle uh he had attacked me or anything I was running on the treadmill last night listening to the game and we scored and I jumped up to celebrate, forgetting where I was at my such electric pace that I was at. Yeah. And I actually, I went flying off the treadmill. Did you? I did. <laughs> Not caught. These things should be captured for posterity, Dave. That would have been fantastic to see. It was an yeah. honestly, I nearly, I was... You all was, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's get to it. Enough about you. It's all about you, isn't it, man? Yeah, it should be. We have uh, my... F favorite ever player uh, on the show this evening um our captain the leader of the latics uh he scored the goals i can remember fantastic goals against qpr away reading away city away uh he scored against wigan in the 90th minute live on sky and that I posted that on twitter and i could have watched that all day he was a tough tackling defender he did all the work of himself and John Sheridan in that dynamic midfield duo. He came from Brad. We signed for Bradford for three hundred and twenty-five thousand um, pounds. It was Neil Warnock who signed him as well. Um, and yeah, I'd love to introduce uh, 
Lee Duxbury. Here he is. Hiya, guys. You okay? Yes, thanks, Lee. Welcome to the Lottics Football Forning. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure. It's the, great to have you. all ours. Yeah, thanks honestly. for accepting. Yeah. Uh, so, how have you been, mate? Yeah, steady away. Uh, I'm I'm out of uh, football now. Uh, just got a steady job uh, working, uh, picking emergency bloods up for the NHS. I've done that for five years. Uh, it's nice to have uh, a free weekend, so I can sort of like watch uh, my son play. He plays for a local team all the way up to a premiership match. Just have to get on to the phone to someone and, you know, try and get, you know, a couple of freebies off someone. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's nice to have me weekends. Uh, one thing I don't miss uh, is travelling up and down uh, the country. You know, I did that for 30 years. Uh, A1, M1, M6, M5. I don't miss that and staying in hotels, honestly. Uh, so, yeah, it's nice to have me weekends and I can watch you know, a variety of football. So, yeah, it's just steady away. So, thanks for asking. How long is it since you left uh, Latics now? How, how long are we going back? Wow, we're talking 2004, I think. I'm guessing right. at that. Bloody hell. Goodness yeah. me. That was as a player, wasn't it? Yeah, it was as, play, as a player. And then uh, when uh, John uh, Sheridan uh, became manager for the first time, uh, I came in and then I stopped uh, as a first team coach for uh, about seven years. Yeah, mm. so I had a good stint at uh, coaching as well, uh, learning my trade in the northwest, which was, which was, uh, which was fantastic. It was a bit like me apprenticeship in football as well uh, at uh, at Bradford. It was great education, like me coaching at Oldham. You know, in them days, uh, your your uh, your education as an apprentice. You was uh, over here. You were playing uh, in the Northern Intermediate League, which were under 19s, mm. and you were playing like Newcastle, Middlesbrough, Sunderland, Sheffield Wednesday, Sheffield United, Leeds, uh, Grimsby, Lincoln, York. Uh, there were the, the Sells Bradford, Halifax had a team, a, a good team. Lee Richardson came uh, from that uh, Halifax team. Uh, you know, so it were a tough, tough. Uh, sort of like league and we won the league uh, two years running there but uh, with that uh, we were playing in the reserve league as well so you were, we were playing on you know Old Trafford Main Road we we're playing Allen Road you know we we're playing on the on the first team ground and playing against sort of like seasoned pros as well so you could imagine the education that you know for a 16, 17, 18 year old you know, like uh, I was similar age to David Batty and Gary Speed. So, we were playing, you know, and, and Gaza were just a little bit older. Uh, but, you know what I mean? We were playing against each other in the uh, under under 19s and in, in, the, uh, in the reserves. So, it was a great, great education. And likewise, in the coaching as well. Yeah. You know, because I was in charge of the reserves at Oldham. You know, we'd play Man City, Man United, Blackburn, Burnley one week. And then we play Bury, Rochdale, Accrington the next week. So you 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 had to uh, change the style of play. You had to sort of like you know motivate the players differently. You know your systems. So it were, it were a great education for me to play against Man City one week and then Accrington uh, against you know Coley's you know Mad Scousers who want to kick you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, it were honestly, it were it were a brilliant education, both from the apprenticeship and my my coaching. So yeah. So in terms of obviously, you signed for Latix uh, in the ninety seven ninety eight season. Neil Warnock wasn't it who signed you for a lot of money back then, three hundred and twenty five grand. Um yeah. Was there any other offers on the table when you uh, when you when, when, or was it was it just Neil who was after you because obviously. You know, um, you 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 were playing very well. You played for Huddersfield a lot of appearances, and then you gone to Bradford, hadn't you? So, um, how did it all come come about, really? Well, uh, Neil Warnock bought me uh, from Bradford to Huddersfield, uh, and then we went up through the playoffs, uh, and then uh, Brian Orton took over at Huddersfield, uh, and it, my face didn't fit, so, and Chris Kamara became manager. 
uh, at Bradford and he brought me back uh, to Bradford and it was the following year we went back uh, we we you know won the playoffs again so it were like you know in two in well one year but two seasons I played at Wembley and won on both occasions and I'm thinking oh this is this is good you know what I mean <laughs> got got to Wembley all the time and that was the last time I played at Wembley. <laughs> I got we got to playoffs uh, with uh, Ian Dowie, uh, uh, and that's as far as I got. And then we got into playoffs as a coach uh, when uh, we played Blackpool uh, yeah. in the semi-finals. But that's a, that's as close as uh, as I got. Uh, so uh, when that's I was as close as we've got since Lee and all. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, when uh, when I was. In the championship uh, for Bradford, uh, doing quite well and what have you. And uh, Neil became uh, manager uh, for Oldham, uh, and he came he came in uh, with a bid, and uh, old uh, Bradford decided, which was a surprise to me because I was I was one of top goal scorers, I was captain, uh, I was flying like, and anyway they must have thought it was good money, uh, and sold me to Oldham. Yeah, so Neil sort of like. Uh, uh, bought me twice. Yeah, and what was the dynamic like between you? Because he's very loyal to certain players, isn't he? And um, yeah, it's you know obviously he likes to have his his lads around him, doesn't he? And I, th I think he stole he stole his captain straight away. All them as well, didn't he? Yeah, well, Neil likes a certain character. If you if you've sort of like go through his even starting off at Scarborough and all the way through Notts County, you know Sheffield United. Uh, Uddersfield, you know, Plymouth. He, he has a certain type of player playing for him that he can trust. He doesn't have superstars, but he has he has he has different pieces of jigsaw, but he has the same type of character that, you know, even on the football pitch, you know, I remember making decisions on the football pitch without without him, you know, knowing it's not right and we have to change something. But that's the type of player he needs, someone that will step up mm. and not look over to get information. So, like, right, you know, we need to do this without asking, you know, and he, he that's the type of player he wants. You know, someone, of course, someone will run through brick walls, but someone that, you know, has that uh, uh, sort of like a togetherness and, you know, uh, will to win for the team. You know what I mean? So uh, you, you can tell over the, over the years what type of player uh, that Neil Neil likes. Well, he's made a good career out of it, hasn't he? As well, he's been very successful. He's still yeah. in management now after retiring, isn't it? Got yeah, back to Huddersfield, yeah. so yeah. it's obviously worked for him, hasn't it? Yeah, of course. I was, I was talking to him last week because he's invited us over to uh, the Huddersfield uh, Coventry game. So uh, he says, "Oh, just pop down after after the game." So. You know, he keeps in, to in contact with with his lads and everything. Who's uh, been loyal to him? You know what I mean. So uh, he's, he's a good bloke, top man. Uh, if you've got a question for Lee, if you'd like to come on and talk, obviously we've we've got the Chesterfield game and the Barnet game to talk about. But if you've also got any favourite memories that you'd like to uh, to chat with Lee about, or you'd like to ask him any questions, you can do. This is how you do it. The Lattice Football Phone is live every Wednesday between half eight and half nine. If you want to join the conversation, then you need to join us on our StreamYard link, which looks something like this. You'll find the StreamYard link in our pin post on Facebook, Twitter, and in the comments section on YouTube. So if you want to join the debate, that's how you do it. There you go. There you go. Very professional as ever, Lee. You see that? We're just, uh, yeah. Um, in terms of, you know, Neil, as a, as a person, you know, as well as a coach, you know, Everyone, there's like a mixture of views. He's a bit of a snapper. He's a bit of this. He's a bit of that. Is he? Is he a good guy? Because I think he's a good guy. But it's all about. It's just first and foremost about winning, isn't it? I think. Of course, by hook, by crook, you know. But he's very, you know, his man management skills are excellent. You know, uh, for example, he'll he'll pull you individually. He'll, he'll walk past you in the corridor, and he'll go, "Oh, we're playing." Ipswich on on Saturday and you've got you're up against so and so. He said, "I once saw you play against him and uh, he got the better of you, uh, <laughs> and he just walk off." And this was like a Tuesday, and you you think to yourself, "No, he didn't. No, he didn't." Mm -hmm. And then Wednesday you have a day off and it'll be burning inside you. By Saturday 
you'll be absolutely fuming and just want to trample over this play you're playing against. You know what I mean? And, and just beat him up and outplay him and, you know, and but he's very, very clever. He'll, he'll say that to individuals, but he'll pull the back four and sort of like say, oh, you know, uh, you need to have a go at your midfield or because they're saying you're dropping back too much. Or, and then he'll get us midfielders and say, tell your defenders they're dropping back too much. But he did it in units and then as a team as well. So by the game, everybody was just spot on and, and knew the job. So very, very clever at his man management skills. We've, and yeah, um... I've, I've, I've been in a few dressing rooms with him, honestly. <laughs> you know, there's there's one, uh, Shrewsbury Town versus Huddersfield, and it's it's been on, on quite a lot. Uh, and uh, honestly, people went, bloody hell, you know, he, he, he went off. That was nothing compared to what has gone on. He quieted it down for the television cameras, honestly. Oh, that's that, that's that clip, isn't it? I think you're sat there, you're just like... Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just nodded, like, I was... Yeah. Andy, Andy Booth had just gone over to Latvia or something like that with under-21s, and he absolutely just battered Boothy, you know what I mean? And it, it were like, oh, poor lad. But, yeah, yeah, that was that tame because he quieted down for the cameras. We've just come off, like I said to you before, we've just come off the back of two away wins, I mean, only won one all season. Um, and David Unsworth has had to, he's building a squad and a side from, not from scratch, because we did have players, but we, we, we've been through so much over the last few years that things have been so bad. There's been a real lack of belief amongst the supporters and amongst the club and everything. And he was saying in the like the last couple of games that like building that belief and confidence in the squad and in the team is the hardest thing to do. The players have got ability. They work really hard on the training ground, but it's the belief and the confidence that's the hardest thing to install. Uh, he, we Obviously, the last couple of results have, have, have suggested that that's coming through, but how much of it, you know, being in a successful team is psychology above anything else? Well, it is. Uh, and uh, again, it's getting the right individuals in and your man management skills. You know what I mean? To 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 sort of like install it in training, uh, you know, and, and then sort of like, you know, every day in and around the dressing room, positivity, you know, the getting the uh, the lads to believe in what you're doing, you know, it all adds up. It all adds up, and it's just you think it, little, little things are, are nothing, but they are. They all add up, uh, mm. you know, uh, over a period of time, weeks, and what have you. And it's just getting that belief and getting the the character and the group of lads together and knowing uh, the strengths and weaknesses. And it's like anything, you know, it's like uh, uh, Sam Allardyce, you, you know, getting a group of players. And it's like, you know, the, he, people said he's long ball, long ball. No, you know, Sam Allardyce, will very, very, you've got Daishi now doing the same. You know what I mean? It's installing that belief in a group of players. And it's similar what what Everton have got to go through now. To get that belief of, you know, getting out of uh, the predicament they're in at the moment. And that's what he's doing with the lads now, uh, uh, with the Oldham players. Getting that that belief that they, they can, you know, sort of like grind results out and just sort of like kick on from there. So it is so important, you know, you, you can sort of like practice and train and this, that, and that, but it is getting a group of lads together, 16, what one were good at, getting a group of lads, 16 lads that w are willing to run through a brick brick wall for each other. You know, of course you've got your weaknesses and strengths, but that belief is massive, yeah. And which, which uh, squad at what time would you say was the, was the best in your experience as a player? At Oldham. Uh, either Oldham or Oldham and in general. Yeah. Uh, well, when I sort of like first joined, there was some quality, quality players. You know, you're talking uh, Ian Snodden. You, you know what I mean? Uh, there were Toddy there, uh, Lee Richardson. You know what I mean? There were some mm. good, good players Uh so th that that team that team were there were a very 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 good team, but in sort of like uh, there were a Bradford City team in the Championship that I played with, 
you know, I had I had Gordon Cowens in in the mid, middle of the park with me. I had Chris Waddle on the left wing. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it were like uh, there were sort of like some players there who were just unbelievable. You, honestly, to play with sort of like these special players, you know, like it was just such a pleasure we were playing with uh, John Sheridan. You know, because there were like three of us in middle at park. There were Johnny middle, me on right, and Darren Sheridan on left. Mm. Honestly, we just sort of like physically, verbally, just destroyed uh, players. You know, and all me and Daz would up and down tackling and just giving the ball to John. And John yeah, would just yeah. sort of like, you know, it was <laughs> yeah. a great relationship. Yeah. 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 But Dave's question here is maybe that'll like cover it, but uh, who's the best Latics player you played with? Uh, without a doubt, uh, it's got to be John, John yeah. Sheridan. You know what I mean? He's, uh, he had a dodgy knee as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But his, his vision, everything about it, he was just world class. He, he went to two World Cups, yeah. played for Ireland. You know what yeah. I mean? And a lot of my mates are Leeds United supporters. <laughs> and he's a legend at Leeds. Mm -hmm. He started off at Leeds. And he's an absolute legend there. He's a god. You know yeah. what I mean? And he was voted the best ever player at Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. So Same you know, here. We absolutely yeah, love him. We love yeah. him to bits. What did you think when he walked through the door? Because obviously, did you hear any rumours or did he just turn up at training? And like dead? Because I bet he was like quite chill, really, a bit a bit like nonchalant, a bit like, all right, you know, a bit like... <laughs> yeah, just a great, great lad. Uh, well... They were at Doncaster, uh, and I think uh, Andy Ritchie knew knew him and invited him over and what have you, and just just to sort of like see him and know that he'd signed. It was like when I were at Bradford when we we signed Gordon Cowens and and uh, Chris Waddle. It's like bloody hell fire. This is just this is just great. You know what I mean? For for me to play with them type of players and for the team and for the club and for the supporters just to watch players like that you know what i mean it's it's just like it must have been such a treat for play uh, for supporters to watch that quality you know so uh yeah uh, john sheridan without a doubt uh would have been uh you know the best the best player that i've played uh at with the uh, oldham yeah well, we've got a few callers, Lee, so we're going to bring him in and ask uh, get to ask you yeah, a question. If that's all right, mate. So yeah. bring it. Uh, we'll bring in Mark. Hi, Mark. Hey, oh, you're all right. Didn't expect to be on that like, quick. <laughs> Evening, gents. Hi, Hi Mark. Mark. Hi, mate. How are we doing? Good, good. Lord. Have you got any questions for Lee, Mark? I have. Yeah, I have. Got two two quick ones. Two quick ones. If that's all right. Yeah. yeah. Um, number one. What was your favourite moment in an Oldham shirt? I would say uh, scoring at Man City, uh, the winner when we beat him two uh, one. Great day out because, especially because my, my wife's uh, dad is a Man City supporter and he were there. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, it was just such a great day out and to score winning goal, uh, diving header. You know what I mean? So uh, that was, I'd say, for me personally. Uh, but yeah, the the the, the goal against Preston. Uh, Wigan, sorry, uh, live on Sky as well. Uh, that were that were memorable because uh, if you notice as well, I, I got interviewed after, and during the week uh, I'd got a false tooth, uh, and it got knocked out. You know what I mean? It would just, and when it's knocked out, I've got a bit of a lisp, so <laughs> it ran out. Because we're live on Sky, I scored winning goal. They're asking me questions, and I was like. I was whistling as I was talking, so that was a bit of a nightmare. So yeah, that was a memorable uh, goal as well, memorable moment. It was at the death that goal, as I remember. Yeah, we could have been unbeaten for it. I don't, how many games? Like twenty games or something like I know, that. No, they're going for a record. And, and uh, you and you went and spot. It was Neil Adams who crossed it in as well. Yeah, he just... did. Ado, yeah, yeah, he's doing well uh, down at Norwich. So and... yeah, he's quality cross. And I think you out jumped Arjun Deji or someone like that, didn't you? At the, at the back post, just, just and, it, and it was like a proper striker's header, like a glancing header, wasn't it? It was. It was John Charles won it back post. <laughs> I won't go that far. But... <laughs> no, I won't either. <laughs> but yeah, it, there's absolute scenes in the end. Sorry, Mark, I'm interrupting you. Know, what's your next question, please, pal? Oh, you're all right. Oh, the next question's uh, it's not strictly football related, but um, is there any chance you can tell us what happened exactly? What happened at Bellevue? 
at Bellevue are there are the too many drinks uh, <laughs> and uh, it was just a bit of a bit of a wrestling match going on now and then. It was just sort of overindulgence of alcohol and uh, yeah, it was just a bit of fun and games, which happen with your mates, don't it, all the time. Uh, so yeah, it, it were more entertaining, and that that was that was more or less it. Yeah, when one of the mates is Lee Hughes, it's always going to be uh, well, of it's always going to be entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just uh, yeah, just a bit of a wrestling match when. Uh, but like I said, you go out with your mates since you were sixteen, and you, you still do it now. You go out and you, you have a bit of a wrestle. So yeah, it was just all fun and games. Good stuff. Good stuff. Nice Thanks very much then for letting me ask the questions. Pleasure to speak to you, Lee. Thank you, right. you. Thank you very much. Cheers, Mark. Cheers, mate. Right, we've got uh, another good guy now. We've got Ibby. Hello, Ibby. Are you there, Ibby? Evening, guys. How, How are you doing, mate? mate? You're right. How you been? I'm all right. How are you, Lee? Lovely to see you again. You, you as well. You okay? Yeah, I used to meet you at the training ground. Yes, I remember. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm all right, buddy. I, I'm hoping that one day you could come back into football. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm all right out of football at the moment. I'm just enjoying myself. I'm going to yeah. watch my, my lad play football, local football, and I just go out and watch sort of like uh, matches. From uh, yeah. you know the conference all the way up to the Premiership, so I'm enjoying my weekends at the moment. That's very good, and uh, it's honestly you had a great time at Oldham. The fans still remember you, and I was looking forward to this show because uh, the guys organised it with you, and I was really looking forward to coming on. Yeah, I was looking forward to coming on as well. You know, I I had success at Bradford, another sale, but the the most Enjoyable football I ever played, uh, and the enjoyable time I I, I had was it uh, was it Oldham without without doubt. Yeah, that's good to hear. And what job are you doing at the moment? You say hospital? Is it local Oldham or somewhere else? No, it's it's a hospital between Keithley and Skipton called Airedale. And what I do is I, I pick uh, emergency bloods up uh, and take them back to the lab uh, for the hospital. That's good. I hope. You keep it going, and uh, do you attend any olden games when you're free? Well, I, I, I watch them on telly, uh, you know, sort of like I, I pick and choose my matches and what have you. So, uh, I, I watched, uh, I, I forgot what it, which match it was uh, a while ago. So, yeah, I can, I can watch quite a few matches. So, yeah, yeah and I, how's Shaz doing? Him. He's doing all right. I spoke to him yesterday. Uh, Is he not coming right. out of retirement? <laughs> he's only just retired, he? Again, he's just retired, yeah. So yeah, he's uh, he's looking after his family. Uh, he's doing a few things that he, he don't normally do. Uh, so yeah, he's uh, he's just having uh, a bit of time out. That's good, Lee and uh, Dave. And uh, Matt, what do you think about the two good results that we've had? Fantastic. Lucky. I'm all joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's because Dave wasn't there. That's what yeah, it is. He's, 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 he's about. Yeah. Obi, uh, Ibi, you've been you were giving uh, Unsworth a bit of stick, weren't you? What what how do you feel after that couple of wins? Have you are you feeling a bit more confident about him now or what? No, no, no I'm just gonna keep it as how it is at the moment. It's only two wins, guys. And last night everyone was celebrating as if we won promotion. We needed to win them though, didn't we? It's put a bit of space. Yeah, no fair bottom, dues, honestly. Fair dues to David Unsworth. He got that absolutely bang on right. Yeah. And and I love I love the scene when he comes on that football pitch and wrestling his arms and hitting the face and all that. That's what yeah. we want, guys. Yeah. Nice to see that. And passion, honestly, wasn't it? absolutely. And I was I was so chuffed to see that on the pitch. And uh, at the moment, uh, I'm still in the middle with him. And I'm just hoping we win on Saturday. And who knows? The playoffs could really. Happen? <laughs> oh, it's it's relegation one week. It's playoffs another. It's it's, it's always up and down with all the minutes. It's never just plain sailing. I bet you found that Lee when you when you were at Latics. It was always yeah, one well, step uh, forward, two step back. It, it was. Uh, we got uh, we got relegated. Then and then uh, we were we struggled for the next few years. You know because we we got rid of sort of like uh, the the 
lads who had been earning uh, big money from the championship. And then when all the young lads were coming through then, uh, and it was just finding that balance. You know, we brought Shez in and a few other lads to help us out and what have you. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, we it were up and down uh, for a few years. But uh, like you said, that's what Oldham will, uh, it has been like ever since. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah, have you got Dave, yeah, Dave, I thought just last night, uh, John Rooney honestly had a brilliant game yet again. He's he's turned it round, hasn't he? It's, uh, he's he's proper getting stuck in, and I think Shelton and Shearing balancing it in the midfield is is looking quite good, isn't it? Chapman's definitely yeah. better on the left, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and we need yeah, to that... drop Nottle on the bench he's because not I think the service. He... he's not getting the service. If he's four five one, he's never going to score goals with all service, is he? Well, he four, well, four, tell two David on. Don't to sign me up so I can give him the service on the pitch. Okay, <laughs> I will do. Uh, yeah, uh, have you got any more questions for Lee? No, thank you very much, guys. And it's Lee Duxbury show, so I'm going to allow other fans to come on. Thanks, Thanks very much, mate. Thanks Cheers. a lot. Yeah, All yeah, the yeah. best, Lee. Bye. All the best, mate. Thank you. <laughs> do you remember Ibby then, uh, I Lee? do, yes. I do. Yeah, he's all, yeah. we were always down at the uh, training ground. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, he's a very passionate fan. He's uh, he's always, um, um, you know, giving the giving the best of his, uh, of his you know, his, his views and stuff. So. Got, got a question here from Danny on the... Uh, on the on the uh, comments, who, would you compare yourself to anyone in the top flight modern day game? Who who would you say you were most like? Uh, well, I was a, you, you have box to box uh, in 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 my day. You know, you usually played with uh, with two in midfield, uh, and it was like a box to box. I, w- I would I would say like a a rice. Uh, for for the sort of like uh, nowadays, but I, I did score a few goals. I scored about seventy goals in my career, mm. quite a lot actually with my head, yeah, uh, with on set pieces and and, and stuff. But yeah, uh, you know, in my early start of my career, I, I was right on side. Uh, Terry Orif gave me a debut uh, against West Ham. This is when this were in nineteen eighty nine. Uh, we were playing down at West Ham. And it were only years later, you you because in then days I was nineteen, you don't realise who you're up against. But years later, I, I re- someone just said, said mentioned, oh, you, you know you, who you played against you, you, on your debut. It was Liam Brady, <laughs> and I remember watching Liam Brady in the nineteen seventies play for Arsenal yeah, in yeah. the FA Cup. But he he played for Arsenal. He played for Juventus. He played for uh, Inter Milan. And then he went to West Ham, and you know you, you just don't realise, uh, you know, who who you actually played against. Uh, so yeah, I, I would say that type of player uh, in nowadays probably uh, Declan Rice, but I scored a f- more goals than he he has. Yeah, that's ex- that's fun- exactly enough, that is exactly what. Uh, my mouse stopped your working? mouse has stopped working a little while, but. Danny has said, oh, if I had put a bet on it, I'd say Declan Rice is his, his quality too. And thanks for the memories, Ducks. Uh, uh, yeah. ba- battery's gone in my mouse. So, always uh, prepared. So that's, always uh, prepared. So Great. that's interesting. Yeah. But yeah, so just we just have to carry on for a minute while I figure that yeah. out. You <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you when you when uh, Neil obviously left the club, um Andy Ritchie took over, and obviously Andy worked as a coach. What was the dynamic change there? Because it was Andy's first job as a as a manager. Did you feel that you had to, as a senior player, get round him and sort of help him in terms of getting the players spurred on, etc., and moving around? But how did it how did it all work out for you on, on that side of things? Was it uh, was it was it quite a challenge for you? Not really, no. But uh, it it was. Uh, you had to you had to step up, usually. You know, I was used to sort of like playing with uh, lads who are usually my age. Uh, mm. You know, like for for the previous seasons at Huddersfield and uh, Bradford, you you all are like 25, 26 year olds, and there were, and you got a couple of young lads. But as soon as uh, we got relegated into the first division, a lot of players left, and we ended up with. Uh, all these young lads coming through, uh, your McNiven twins, uh, yeah. uh, Rickers, Paul Rickers, uh, there were Halty, there were Mark Hallett, 
though there are all these lads that are coming through and there were to be honest there were too many young lads and not enough senior players uh, the myself sean garnett uh, and then john came which was a great help so it was too many young lads to begin with and it was a bit of a struggle because you know they were learning the trade as well <coughs> so uh, the first season was was tough uh, you know what i mean but like i said uh, we played some good football but uh, it was it was a tough season that first season yeah and also the fact uh, is that you actually won some silverware at Oldham Athletic uh, which was the Isle of Man <laughs> Um, tournament, didn't you? You had to be uh, under Andy Ritchie, and uh, before we came on air, you said you got a few uh, few stories about that. Yeah, uh, you, honestly, you are the last captain to win some silverware at Latix. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> then that that tournament were brilliant. You know, there were teams Watford, there were you know Watford, Wigan, Preston, Burnley. Uh, they all sort of like went over, and it were honestly it, it was fantastic and. Uh, we were like, it was a bit of a uh, team bonding exercise as well. You know, it's like uh, uh, Andy, he liked, he liked us to work hard, which we did and what have you, and play hard uh, during the games and what have you. But it, and it, drink it, hard. And yeah, well, it, it, <laughs> it, it, it encouraged us to go out and have a few. But where we were stopping, uh, because... Uh, we were, we knew if we were, went down into uh, the the city centre, we'd get found up, find up, found out. So, myself and John Sheridan went had a little wander uh, further back, and we found a, a, a workings men's pub with pool tables, <laughs> darts, doms, <coughs> you name it. It were there. It were brilliant. And for like five nights running. Uh, we were just there, you know, having a, having a few sort of like, and then sneaking in uh, later on. But the gaffer, Andy Ritchie, knew we were going out, but he would try to find us. But he couldn't find us because we, we were like half a mile in from the course <laughs> at this working men's pub. Uh, but we kept on winning, you know what I mean? We kept on sort of like going out, <laughs> and we kept on winning, and we got into the final, and we won the final. But the night before the final, uh, Andy Ritchie had a meeting. He says, "Look, lads," he says, "I want you to, I want you to go out tonight. This what before the final. Carry on doing what you're doing, but we'd had that much to drink. We just couldn't go out. We went, no, we need an early night. <laughs> we just refused to go out. Yeah, so the, that that was so. It was brilliant, brilliant times out there, and you know, you, you met meet all." Rest at footballers out for a few drinks and what have you. In afternoon, you know, you, you'd bump into people. But yeah, it were a great tournament. You know, really happy days. Uh, and I can remember one year as well. Uh, I think we got knocked out in the semis. And this was like on a Friday. The semi final were a Friday, and the final were on a Sunday. And we'd had enough. We wanted to go home. And I can't remember who we were playing in the semi-finals. I think it was Preston. And it was penalty shootout. And it was like, after about 30 penalties, it was about one all. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, we were purposely missing penalties. And <laughs> Gary Kelly was diving even before he, he kicked the shot. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, I don't want to stay. I don't want to stay for another two days. You go in final. But yeah, it was such happy memories that Isle of Man trip. It was brilliant, yeah. Yeah, talking to Gary Kelly, is it true that he used to have a, a Hamlet before the game, a, a cigar before the game? He was. Oh, uh... he used to love his uh, cigars, and and uh, you know he, he, he likes he liked to drink as well. Uh, bless him, he, what you know, what a character again, what a character, and uh, he's lost an arm now, Kells. Right. He, uh, yeah, he, he, he had a bit of cancer and uh, he, he, he had his arm amputated and what have you. But, uh, you know, he's, he's still about, he's still about, he's a, you know what I mean, he's, he's a warrior. Oh, brilliant. Mm. Well, it's very sad to hear as well. We're going to bring in Graham to the stream now. Yeah, I'm having to, what I'm having to do is tab, use the tab key around all the different things on the keyboard. But if I press enter now, it should enter the Graham. So there, there we, we go. go. 
Okay, Thank you. Yeah. so that's good. You all right, Graham? Hey, Graham. Yeah. Welcome to the show, Gra Graham. Yeah, we can hear you up there in Scotland. Yeah, in... Uh, uh, Dumfries? Dun Is Polk it Ambroth? Where? Falkirk. 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 There we go. Have you anyway. got a question for Lee, pal? Yeah, I was just wondering. He, he told us who his favourite player playing with was, but who's his favourite player to play against? Uh, well, I've played against some world-class players. Uh, you know, Paul Gascoigne, George Weyer, uh, Viali, <coughs> you know, and it, it, once you get higher you are, it's more of a sort of like a, a chess game, you know, because, for example, I played against Paul Gascoigne straight after the Italian World Cup when he was arguably the, the best player in the world. Uh, I played him down at Tottenham. Uh, he, he were playing... Uh, Lineker were playing and I were up against him so you think to yourself right I can't really intimidate him or smash him because the Argentinians can't do it the Brazilians haven't done it you know all the South Americans the Dutch they haven't done that so why why shall I do it so you think to yourself right well what what can I do to nullify him so what you do is you go right I'm going to get close to him to make him go backwards or sidewards, job done. You know what I mean? You don't want him to score and you don't want him uh, to create a goal or out like that. But is that clever? World-class players are that clever. He'll go stand somewhere else. And I don't want to come out of my little zone to go mark him sort of like further out on the wing because I'll leave a big space there for Gary Linus to get to feet. So it's like a chess game. So yeah, I'd say I'd say Paul Gaston because, you know, because he was at the time the the, the best player in the world. You know what I mean? And uh, I were up against him. What a fantastic person he was talking to me all the time, uh, but I didn't do a very good job. He he scored and got my match. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of lost love for Gaza after Euro '96. Oh, that's, course, one of our, yeah. that's one of our favourite moments of Gaza. Yeah, yeah. Graham. I could like <laughs> bullied over Colin and put it in a goal. Yeah, oh, yes. absolutely. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant goal, like it. Yeah, yeah brilliant goal, that one. Day. Happy days for, yeah. for us. <laughs> no, no, good goal. Um, yeah. My second question was um, Did you ever play with Peter Clark? Because I'm liking him being back at Oldham. He's been playing quite well coming off the bench, and his goal the other night was quite good. Clark, uh, Peter Clark. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have I played against with, him? With him or against him or come up against him in, in your time? No, uh, I'm sort of like what I've been retired for quite a, quite a few years now. Uh, so uh, no, I, I haven't played. I haven't played against him. Or you know, uh, I've uh, too old now. I'm 53. <laughs> well, I mean, he, he's doing amazing, isn't he? He's forty-one, and he's um, yeah. he's there last night, coming off the bench and scoring a sealing the game for us. What a what a character he is! And like we, I think there's. I mean, we've spoken to people uh, like Tony Cars and you know, and, and shares and people that you know, you know, that were that played uh, in your kind of era. And I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's. If it's truth, but like there doesn't quite seem to be the same sort of characters. Things have changed, haven't they? In football, in in personalities, in the way that players conduct themselves, how they look after themselves, and all that. Is obviously the like the money's better now, uh, but do you think maybe it's lost some of what made it special for you uh, in your time, Lee? Or would you rather have taken the money? <laughs> well, yeah, of, of of course the money does help and what have you, but. You know, I played 700 matches. You know, I played at Wembley twice. Uh, I've, I've played against some of the best players in the world. I've played at nearly every stadium uh, in England. Uh, I've had some great, happy memories. And personally, my view is that the the the, the overcoached, personally, I think they're overcoached. And I'll go back to my education as in, there weren't a lot of coaching going on. You know, you got thrown into the first team. You got thrown into the first team training and it was like brutal. You know, you got told once to do something and if you got told two or three times, you won't get asked to go over, come from the youth team again. You know what I mean? It, it was brutal. 
and playing in the reserves as well. You know, you, you I, we were up against, you know, I remember playing up against Norman Whiteside at Everton, you know, and, and, and other players at that stature, you know, and it were a great education. But you had to think for yourself. You, mm. had, you had to work things out. You, you know, you, you had to be a little bit nasty. You had to look after yourself because, you know, David Batty were going to smash you or try and elbow you. You know, you, you had to sort of like step up. And nowadays, I think too many uh, lads are looking over to the coach and going, mm. what, what do I do? You know, and it's like, no, work it out yourself. It's mm. like what uh, uh, Graeme Sooner said when he, his first match for Liverpool. You know, they were sort of like he'd been uh, brought up from Tottenham uh, and, you know, he were like record signing and everything. He said, but nobody were telling me what, you know, before match, what how to play and what to say. And he said, I went up to Ronnie Moran and said, look, you know, you know, what do you want me to, to do? And Ronnie Moran turned around and said, you know, you, you're you asking me. He says, you're the player. He says, you go out there. You sh you know, you're the player. You go out there and show us what you, 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 you're good at. We should mm. be telling you. You go out there and show us. And it's a, I think it's like that. I think they're the, the looking at the coach more than dealing with them th the, the, mm. the things themselves. You know, mm. working things out themselves. You know, this this right winger's taking the pee out of me. You know, how am I going to... Instead of looking at his coach and, put, you know, raising his hands, no, you deal with it. You know, get your bloody winger back, you know, smashing him a couple of times, intimidating him a couple of times. You know, get help from your midfield player. Work it out yourself. And I think they're all the coach nowadays. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that from, from the point of view of having watching games... Oldham games, particularly over the last number of years, and recruitment's been terrible for all, all kinds of reasons that we won't go into, but yeah, you've been yeah. looking for players on the pitch to take the game by the scruff of the net. You can see what's not working. Yeah. And you wanted to see the characters. You want to see that um, ag aggression and people arguing with each other and yeah, motivating yeah. each other and, and, and taking control of the game. And mm. uh, I, I, think, I, I, I think I agree. I think well, you can see it in terms of the way that formations and... And, and, you know, we've got to play this system, that system. We're playing out from the back. All the, you can see that people that, do, they, yeah. they follow trends now, don't they? Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's happening all the time. And I think like I think it's a good observation, that, Lee, that they are like, that, that, that kind course. of like, the, that, that the more freedom robots, has gone. Yeah. The more robots and, and, and there's no characters, you know. That's what and, Shez, said to, Shez said to us in his final games when he, we were going down. He was just crying out for that leader. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he could see it in Shez's face that he was like, he... You could see, like yourself and Shez in the middle of the park. You didn't give Rickers a minute, did you? When you when you played with um, when you played with Rickers, he, he was yeah. like he was like your protege, weren't he? To at, at some point, like you you were Rodders do this, Rodders do that, Rodders do you know? You were just telling him what to do all the time. You didn't give him a minute to think, did you? Do you know what I mean? No, or, no, no. It, and, and that's for uh, helping him, helping me, helping him, but helping the team. Yeah, you know, and th there's not enough of that. I don't think. And, and if they're coming through these um, systems where they're playing other young players all the time and they're not up against experienced pros in the reserves systems and stuff like that and getting that experience at a younger age, it's not really going to change, is it? Unless they're thrown no. into the... Uh, unless they go out on loan, at, you know, uh, lower yeah. down the leagues and stuff like yeah. that. So I've got, I've got a question here from uh, Faraz. Uh, what did you make of Dave Penny? Um, and what, what was he sort of like as a coach? He's a nice, a great, great guy, you know, nice human being and what have you. But it just didn't work out straight away, you know, a, a Yorkshire Yorkshire guy as well. You know what I mean? And uh, it just, it, the, the players he brought in weren't right for uh, uh, Oldham. Yeah. And he it, it, it struggled, uh, you know, he could have done with a strong character uh, in in there to sort of like help him out, but yeah, it, it just it, it, the, on the football side of it, it just didn't didn't work out. But as a human being, he's such a nice bloke, you know, family man and everything. But, <coughs> but unfortunately, the plays he brought in want up want up to standard for me personally. Mm. In, 
in terms of um, sorry, Graham, you've got any more questions, mate? Um, I was just going to ask him where does he think we'll finish this season? Well, I think uh, top table, top at table, you know, pushing uh, and gaining confidence for next season. Yeah, that will take that, won't we, Graham? I'll take top 10 right now and then next absolutely. season. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, playoffs, playoffs going <laughs> yeah. up. Did you see yeah. there was a, it just flashed up my phone? Grimsby beat Southampton. All right. That's a good Magic, magic of the cup, eh? But next year in the FA Cup, to try and get by the first round, push on. Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice, yeah. wouldn't it? Great stuff. Thanks, Cheers, Graham. Graham. Cheers, Graham. Right now, now, I, right, okay. So now, what I have to do is I have to tab the uh, thing. <laughs> Let's see if the, if the mouse has uh, got any charge in it. Has it got any charge? Have we got, got it's charge? one of those yeah, USB. We got the mouse back. The mouse, yeah. Might not have it back for long though. So, uh, yeah, this we've been having this for ages. Let's have it. It's. I think I know what it'd be. But would you would you have stuck or twisted with Unsworth? I think would you stick or twist? put it in the present sense like how long do you think it takes uh you know we've been asking people this massive massive job of reconstruction at all doom like huge task for him how long do you think it would take uh given the situation uh to to get a promotion contending team would you expect much like in this season or is just surviving a, 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 as surviving as as this season you know what i mean it, it, it honestly it maddens me what's happened to certain clubs uh oldham bury Scunthorpe, you know, Bradford nearly went that way as well until they got rid of the CEO. These people that run clubs, you know, I've, I've, I've done an article in the, the, the Bradford paper, TNA, uh, about these owners uh, with their egos and what have you. It infuriates me. Uh, they should just stay away from the footballing side of it and, and let the football uh, people uh, deal with it and give him chance uh you know this season like i said is survival next season is building something that his is in his mind of success as in bringing people in style of play uh and and so on and so on and i'm looking for you know hopefully next season to get into the playoffs but the season after that you know really go for the push so that's what that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, I think. I mean, we sort of tend to agree with that. Um, I tell you what, Bradford dodged a bullet though, didn't they? That, those guys that b- bought Crawley Town, that Wagme United, those crypto clowns from America, they've oh. uh, they've dropped Crawley into into relegation spots. And I, I was really really glad that they didn't buy Bradford because obviously Bradford are I, one of the teams that we want to be playing every season. Hey, you love going to Valley yeah. Parade, you know. You want to yeah. see the Bradford fans at Boundary Park, you know. Great club, um, great day out going to Bradford and all uh, for the for the away fan. You know, we don't really want to be playing the likes of Crawley, but I'm so glad that they didn't get their hands on Bradford and 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 send Bradford the way that we've gone and and maybe even worse because I think that would definitely would have happened. So yeah. I'm glad about that. Yeah, so am I. Yeah. Right, well, we, uh, we've we got... Should we bring Danny in? He'll bring Danny in. He's been waiting patiently. Funnily enough, Danny has met this week uh, that player, your favourite player that you played against. Danny, you met Gazza this week, didn't you, mate? Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, who do you prefer, Gazza, Gazza or Duxbury? <laughs> Duxbury all the way. <laughs> ah, yes. Well, Happy I days. just want to show you something, Lee. Yep. Family heirloom. Oh. Uh, Let me get my glasses on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here we are. My son, he's got a wall with Tyson Fury, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo sign ball, a couple of match balls. But the family heirloom. Oh, there we <laughs> go. Yeah. Is that the one? Is that the one with the curtains? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. And uh, the that's... missus says, "I wish you'd throw that photo away. I'm married man now." <laughs> that photo away. Do you know what she's talking about, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, never throwing that away. I'm giving it Reese. And uh, oh, happy it, days. It's, it's on his wall of fame. I don't think yeah. he's got a clue who you are, but I keep <laughs> we need a duck spray. We need a duck spray. Yeah, yeah. and it's one. It, you, you know, it's, Lee, one of those names where, like, you know, I said to me dad, uh, "Oh, we've got Lee Dutchbury coming up for it." Oh. Great player, quality player for Atlantics. Yeah, yeah. You know, like yeah. one of those, one of those names that whoever you 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 mention, you you name to Lee as a, as a Latics fan who, who was around at the time. Was like, 
oh yeah, we could do with a lead up spray <laughs> back yeah, yeah. in our team right now. You know, That's nice. It's nice. Must be nice. It must be. It must be nice as a as a as a as a former footballer to to have. You know, like you say, you've had a really good career. You played some really good clubs. Um, it must be nice to look back and, and and have that kind of warmth from fans and have all those memories. Yeah, you know, when when once I when I were a lad, all I wanted to be is a professional footballer. You know what I mean? And like I would grew up in nineteen seventies. You know, I love football. You know, that's all I wanted to do. And you know, I, I knew I wasn't going to be world class or anything like that. But I, like. You know, I played, I wasn't as good as other people who played just 200 matches. You know, I wanted to play as long as I could mm. until my body gave up. I played for like 20 years and 700 games. I love playing football. I even sort of like play football every other th uh, Thursday night, you know, at uh, my look indoor uh, sports sports hall with my mates who I've known since I was five. You know, it's, it's, it's like, uh, it's a knockout. We, you know, without the suits, because everybody's put <laughs> loads of weight on, just fall down for, for fun of it. It's, it's, yeah. I just love, I just love playing football, yeah. and you know, to uh, to have these uh, people say nice things about me, it, it, you know, it, it is, it feels good for me. Yeah, brilliant. What's your question, Danny? I asked it before. Who, who would you remind? Who, who would you think of himself as in, in a modern day football? And he said, yeah. Yeah. Right. And, I said before he answered, I said to my missus, I said, I bet he says Declan Rice. In, yeah. terms, of your, in, in terms of your favourite memory of Lee, barring the Wigan goal and barring the City goal, what would it be, Danny? Just his uh, passion and his energy. Just um, yeah. every game he get, it was 110% out on his uh, sleeve, out on his shirt or whatever you say. Um, <laughs> he was just there, captain commando. <laughs> he, he, he was fucking brilliant. So, <laughs> thanks, thanks for that. And, Thank you uh, for that. We've got a new leader of Atlantics now, Peter Clark, but he's he's not a stitch on you, mate. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. keep it up. Thanks for that. The, the, the Latics football loving. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. Well, I bet you if you, well, I bet you, I bet you if you went round Oldham Lee in a, any home game, you went round the pubs near the ground, you you wouldn't you wouldn't have to buy yourself a beer. And sure. being a Yorkshireman, you'd probably like that, wouldn't you? Got to ask you this random question. It's going to seem random, but we do have a theme when it comes to beef paste on this show. Do you like beef paste, Lee? Yes, I do. With tomato, yes. bit of yeah, beef more. paste. A tea cake, beef paste, <laughs> tomato oh, with a bit oh. of pepper. A tea cake? Why does yeah. it, it, what, we're currents in. It's called a muffin, so we'll, we'll stop a that. Muffin, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, lived in all, you, you, you played for Oldham long enough, mate. I yeah. know, I've, I've, known. Yeah, I've so, got a question. Yeah. Uh, did you ever come, you know, in your, in your career span at Latics, you know, when you got to the, the end of a season, end of a contract, did you ever get any other offers from any other clubs and get temp tempted away from Latics? There were, there were a few, yeah. Uh, Peter Taylor, who, when he was uh, manager at Huddersfield, when uh, oh, I've forgotten his name now. It was before Ian Dowie. Mick Wadsworth. Uh, Wadsworth. Uh, he sort of like brought me in once and, and said that Hull wanted me, uh, but I didn't want to go. I, I, mm. You know, I wanted to stay at Oldham. Uh, you know, so uh, th there were that time uh, and the, there were only that time that I knew someone came could come in uh, for me. There, were, there might have been other times where that they just said no, you know, and not even told me. But mm. that's the only time I was at Oldham when I knew a club had come in for me, uh, and I, I I didn't want to go. That's hey, Lee, Dan, did go on, did you score at uh, Main Road against City? Yeah. Yes. Did you score? Yeah. City yeah, we re, penalty, re scored it? a penalty. I think there were two penalties in that game. Uh, uh, we scored Paul Reed scored the first penalty then uh, or did they miss a penalty go to miss yes, penalty yes we did yeah and then uh, I scored the, the diving header from a was corner this, was that the last game that we played against them at Main Road because yes like, it was they, yeah, yeah. I, I'd been out all night that night and not been to bed uh, and sat behind the goal uh I remember us winning. I remember it was great, but I, I don't remember very much. Well, I, I remember, well that yeah. was your no, lifestyle yeah, back then. It was, that, it, was, that was the 90s for me. 
Uh, <laughs> if I got to a game on a Saturday, I'd been up all night. But yeah, uh, fantastic. What, what an occasion. Yeah, we, and away. then we, we, they've not beat us since then. I've been in a competitive game. We, we played no. them in the FA Cup then a few years later and beat them. I remember, yeah. you, I remember you putting one on Robbie Fowler in the friendly when they beat us 4 1. You proper put one in on Fowler because he, he, uh, he fouled Airsy. And you came on as a sub and you went straight through the back of Robbie Fowler. I think you put him out for four games. Though, that was my only memory. You went straight yeah. through the back of Robbie Fowler. Honestly, I used to I, I used to enjoy smashing people just as much as scoring goals. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that it, it, I, I would be if if you if you got a goal for smashing people. Yeah. I'd have got 700, uh, 700 goals. The Ronaldo was smashing. Oh, honestly, I just set, and I had the art of sort of like uh, just getting the ball and just sort of like smashing them at the same time. Yeah, it, there's a, there's an art to it. But uh, one player that uh, is just a quick story when uh, uh, Chris Waddle. I uh, played in the same team. We'd, you'd end up playing sort of like a, a practice, you know, a, like an eight-a-side uh, match to finish off training. And he'd be on the opposition ta- team and he'd, he'd like try and wind you up all the time verbally and what have you. And I think to myself, right, next time he gets the ball, I'm going to smash him. You know what I mean? Because he'd like winding me up. I was in my prime at 26 <coughs> and Wads were about 34. Honestly, were that good. I, I thought, I've, I've got him here. I'm going to smash him and laugh at him. He skipped over me, right, or scored a goal or created a goal and left me on the floor and started laughing. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> he was the only player that he were like, you know, so, so good. He were, he were unbelievable. But, yeah, I, I used to like to, uh, like I said, I, I enjoyed uh tackling you know smashing people really how, how long do you think you'd last in modern game <laughs> well again again i was uh i had to adapt in them days i remember uh playing for bradford i were only 21 i was captain i was 21 we played burnley down at valley parade frank stapleton were, were in charge i got sent off after five minutes i was <laughs> literally stood in the shower and it said five past three. And I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, my God. You know, I've, I've let the lads down. It, it was just, what have I done? Anyway, I, I realised I had to change, you know, change. Uh, but you, you you adapt. You have to and that's adapt. And that's when you learned how to combine it with a, with a tackle and make it look a bit less suspect, was it? A bit nice <laughs> well, to the referee. A bit snider. Yeah. Yeah. I did, oh, I did really on, like the left back and I did put him into the stands. <laughs> <laughs> I thought hey, I'd yell it. I got. I thought I'd have got away with the yellow, but he'd give me the red. And Dave, you you've had the the privilege of what giving a, a penalty against penalty Lee Dodge against Lee and booking him. Yeah, yeah, yeah at the, absolutely. At the fans well, fully, legends match. Fully deserved. That was a dodgy yeah. penalty and a dodgy yellow card as well. Uh, well I think they needed a, they needed a bit of help, though. I think they needed a bit of <laughs> yeah, of but yeah, fair play. Right, Danny. Well, we're gonna we're gonna ask uh, Lee some quick fire questions. So we'll see you on, in the fans bar on Saturday. Yeah. See you later, yeah. pal. Thanks, Cheers, Colin. Danny, mate. Thank, Thank you, you. Danny. Right, so here we go. Prepare yourself, Lee. Ready? Yeah. Quick fire questions. Right, Lee. Red sauce or brown sauce? Brown. Rugby league or rugby union? League. Vic or Bob? Bob. Bradford or Oldham? Oldham. John Sheridan or Toddy Orlikson? Chez. Neil Warnock or Andy Ritchie? Warnock. Barry Owen or The Devil? <laughs> the Devil. Whee! <laughs> Cricket or golf? Oh, God, neither. <laughs> Boring now. East Enders or Corey? Uh, Emmerdale. <laughs> Chinese <laughs> or curry? Chinese or a curry? Curry. United or City? City. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Rolling Stones or the Beatles? Beatles. Jackson 5 or Jackson Pollock? Jackson Pollock, who's he? <laughs> <laughs> That's it, mate. Well done. There we go. Just a little bit of an insight into you there. Yeah, uh, Lee, so the so. devil too. Hey, Lee, um, I, don't, I don't know if you're doing out 
on the 30th of April, but everyone should keep that date free. Because Attention, save the date. 30th April 23. It will be live, loud, and beefy. We're a li- we're a little bit obsessed with beef. Yeah, on this, beef uh, paste. Show. I'm glad but, you. I'm, I'm so happy you like beef paste. That's my like best bit of the all night. Right. Yeah, we are, yeah. we are we want. I'm not going to give the exact details, with, but we are doing a live show uh, on the 30th of April, the Latix uh, podcast live special show. We're going to have music and special guests and all that kind of stuff. So if you if you've got a space in your diary, 30th of April, keep it free. You personally, you're invited to come along. And everybody else, keep it free. We're going to announce deep, more details shortly, but it's going to be a mega event in it. It is yeah, not a problem. I'll leave beefy. it open for you. It's going to be beefy. brilliant. That's that's great. It's going to be loads of ales and loads, loads of, of ale, fun. beef it's going paste, to be and uh, yeah, latics, <laughs> <laughs> ales, beef paste, <laughs> yeah. a, what, what, what more do you want? want? Yeah, it's the Sunday after the season finishes. So, so it's Bank Holiday Sunday, mate. So, Sunday, so yeah, it's going to be quality. So yeah, it's listen, Lee. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so oh, much for brilliant. joining I've, us. I've really enjoyed it, honestly. I enjoy uh, talking about you know the the past, uh, Oldham and everything. So you know, if, if there's any time you want me back on, just give us a shout. Oh mate, it's honestly, sick. it's been honestly you are my favourite ever player ever. Uh, Thank you. So it's it's been quite nerve wracking, but very very uh, like you're such a humble guy and. It's been brilliant, uh, so, but I'm really sorry for booking you in that charity game. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he deserved it to me. Yeah, he did. He's, but... <laughs> uh, you know, even if it wasn't that one, he, he must have got away with a few that he deserved the yellow card. Well, so, definitely. You know. Honestly, mate, you are the leader of the Latics in my eyes, and you always will be. So thank you. Thank you ever so much, mate. Thank you very Cheers, much. Lee. Thanks, Cheers, Lee. Cheers. See you All later. Right. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. Hi. What a lovely chap. Top. Absolutely fantastic. It's a real pleasure um, and a privilege on, to, to be able to talk to some Latics legends on this show, innit? And um, yeah. yeah, it's really great. Thanks Amazing. for getting involved, uh, all you, all you callers. Comments, uh, um, it's been really good. We've not really spoke about the football. Ducks is the best. Uh, legends. Yeah, Ducks is the best. Uh, great show. Lee has been a great guest. Lovely yeah. bloke. Absolutely. Dave Bradley, sexy. No, no, no. You've Matt's made that not. Up. You've made that up. Um, um, yeah, uh, yeah. How hot is Dave? <laughs> Look, mom, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> we we didn't need to talk too much about the football. Did we? We've won two games on the bounce. There, there seems to be some character now. Well, they don't, the, the callers, well, he's gone. Uh, the callers don't uh, ring up, do they? When we win, no, they like a good moan, don't they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, do we, we, it, it's the old piss boil goes down better than there. But listen, hey. let's see what happens on Saturday. Might lose 5 0. What's your prediction, Matt? Um, I think we're going to keep the winning streak going. I think we're going to win 2 mm. 1, Dave. What do you think? Uh, I think we're going to be okay. Mm, thanks for that, football genius. Right. Thanks for getting involved, everyone. See you next time. See you. The Boundary Park Alert System is hosted and produced weekly by Matt Dean, Andy Halliwell and Dave Bradley. A huge thank you goes to those people who already subscribe to the podcast. We appreciate you all and if you'd like to help us out financially, please visit oafcpodcast.co.uk and click support or find the link in the show notes. It's only $2.99 a month to subscribe, but if you'd rather make a one-off donation, please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash oafcpodcast or click the link on our website. Please follow and interact with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok at OAFC Podcast and subscribe to youtube.com forward slash at OAFC Podcast where you will find the Latics Football phone in with myself and Dave Bradley live every Wednesday from 8.30pm. We'd like to thank Arlene Finnegan for writing our excellent weekly blog which we encourage you to read on our website every Saturday morning and thanks also goes to Paul Prentergast for providing us with all the Latics Mind questions. The title music for the show is by Manchester DJ and producer Starion and for more information visit bandcamp.com forward slash red laser records you can help change the game by listening to us on the fan hub app along with all major podcast platforms please like subscribe and review the pod and help us climb the rankings to get more listeners wherever you listen thank you for listening and if you'd like to be a guest or contribute to the show in any way we'd love to hear from you see you next week